What's up everybody, Alan Tyler here. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Alan. Today, we are cooking through lesson five in the Four Hour Chef. We're just counting them up as we go. Today's recipe is uh, harissa crab cakes. Now harissa, I also don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a chili sauce. Uh, I believe it is primarily, uh, or the, the origins of it are from Tunisia. I couldn't find it and I didn't look far enough ahead of time to be able to order some online. So in space of harissa, I'm just going to actually be using uh, chipotle Tabasco sauce. This is just one of my favorite hot sauces. Equipment for today is very straightforward. We are going to need uh, a knife, our cutting board, and a can opener. So we're going to be making crab cakes and learning sort of the patty forming technique, but the big technique that we are going to be learning and practicing today is actually a knife skill to cut some uh, green onions or scallions that we're going to be using in the recipe. So it's not actually directly related to the crab, but it's a chance for us to practice uh, this knife technique. So I'll walk you through that when we get to that stage. But for ingredients, we'll need a couple of things. Of course, some crab. Uh, this is actually just canned crab meat. Uh, I haven't used any of this before. I live in Oregon. Dungeness crab season just started here. It's almost a shame to be using canned crab meat for this. So for this recipe, the book calls for canned crab meat. So we're gonna be using that. We're also gonna need some, couple of scallions, an egg, technically just the egg white, our hot sauce of choice, grapeseed oil, and some pepper. And a little bit of lime when we actually uh, finish cooking the crab cakes. So before we get cooking, we're actually going to look at the knife skills section and practice on our scallions. So the section in the book that goes to these knife skills, it says introduction to dim mock, which they say literally translates to press artery in Cantonese, which is, uh, it's essentially referring to this uh, shape that you make with your hand and your fingers that helps you be able to cut things and keep your fingers protected, but also have a very, very even consistent cut. I'm only familiar with this term, dim mock, uh, from uh, Steve Aoki. I believe it's the name of his production company or recording company uh, for music, dim mock records. The, the, the key to it is to take your, your pointer finger and ring finger and you squeeze them together underneath your middle finger. And then we'll be using that on the cutting board to uh, hold the, the knife close to it um, and actually be slicing sort of along your fingernail to keep your fingers protected, but also keep you in a little accurate zone. The other important piece for this cutting technique is actually learning to make sure that you have your arm and the knife at a 90 degree angle and a per totally perpendicular to the cutting surface that you're at. And to get that, you actually just turn your hips at a 45 degree from the countertop or the surface that you're cutting on. So if I were to pick up this knife and just hold it with our grip that we learned early on, if I'm standing right here and I just turn my hips 45 degrees, the knife essentially in my arm magically go to that, that perpendicular 90 degree angle. So that's the first part of it is just the placement of the cutting board and where you're, how you're holding the knife. The knife grip stays the same for this part. So to practice this part, um, it says to take it very, very slowly. So I'm gonna just try this slowly. So first we're just going to cut off the ends. And then a key for this section is to actually make sure you've got only two to three inch segments of whatever it is that you're cutting. So I'm gonna take my de-ended scallions and chop them up into three segments, I think, total. Give me nice little easy, easily manageable chunks. These all lined up on one side. You use your thumb on the end of it just to hold things in place and then keep these all together up at the front. And then you literally have the tip of the blade up against your finger, or at least the, the flat part of it, 
And as you go, you're just kind of pulling your fingers back along, like you're closing a little pincher rather than pushing it forward with the thumb. So you're just kind of squeezing, sliding your finger back. The other piece it talks about in the book is actually being able to keep the tip of the blade on the cutting board as you're cutting, which they call, which is called the, the French method, or the Chinese method where you're actually picking the entire blade up and more or less going straight up and down with the whole blade. So I've probably more typically done this, but I, I also like the straight up and down method as well. All right, so that's it for our cutting lesson for today. I learned a little bit from that, and I think it'll be good to just keep practicing that with things like green onions, uh, celery, I guess, is great to practice with, even carrots. So let's keep moving forward with the recipe. Into the bowl, we're gonna add one egg white. One tablespoon of our hot sauce. I'm just gonna eyeball this. 10 turns of ground pepper, and then our crab. Now for the crab, I'm gonna open these with a can opener and then drain the liquid out before I jump it into there. Now we just gotta mix all that together and then form it into little patties. We're aiming for a total of four patties. So we got our four crab cakes ready to go. All we gotta do is fry them up, top them with a little bit of lime, and enjoy. truth. I'm going to give one of these guys a shot. Maybe got a little too much fry on it. It's a little chewy on the one side where I had it in the oil for a little bit too long. Other than that, it tastes like a crab cake. It's mostly like, it really tastes purely like crab without the extra breadcrumbs and everything in there. I'm mostly getting crab and a little bit of the spice. I probably could have gone with a little more of that Chipotle Tabasco. Again, I don't know how that compares on a spiciness level to the harissa sauce. So I'll be really curious to try it with the harissa sometime. But I'm gonna finish this one and uh, go share these with my family. That's it for today. Thank you for joining me once again on Cooking with Alan. This was lesson number five from the Four Hour Chef Harissa Crab Cakes. We learned some knife skills, learned a little bit about frying and exploring uh, canned crab meat. So thank you once again. Don't be afraid to like this video. Leave a comment if you've got a favorite recipe for crab cakes that you've had yourself. And uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe for more fun recipes and learning from the 4-Hour Chef. Thank you, and I'll catch you in the next video. One more thing before you go. Uh, after I enjoyed, well, actually tried to enjoy some more of those crab cakes, I really, I didn't really like them. Um, my family was kind of okay with them. I added a little bit of cocktail sauce to dip them in, which helped. But I think the big thing was that it just canned crab meat, at least the, whatever I got, I just don't think was very good or very high quality. And maybe I'm totally spoiled living here in Oregon where we get fresh Dungeness. So I'm definitely gonna try this recipe again with, with fresh crab that either I pick myself or get kind of fresh picked from the store. It's quite a bit more expensive that way, but I think that it, the final flavor will, will come out a lot better. The whole experience was definitely still successful and a good learning opportunity. But the knife skills in particular, I think will be really good to practice and get some more experience with. And then uh, just that, that method of being able to just use an egg white to hold that stuff together and then fry it up was, was really, really cool. And I think that'll be really useful down the road, uh, being able to use the egg white as, as kind of a binding agent. So yeah, just a few more thoughts that I had. Wanted to, to, to let you know that that I, I don't know, this that, uh, this is the first recipe out of five, as well as some variations on the scrambled eggs that, that I, I just, I haven't, 
I didn't really like this one. So I don't think it's the recipe's fault. I think it's the ingredients that I used. And I'll be keeping that in mind um, going forward.